I'm Steve Wiss from the Nordic Football Podcast and it's that time of year again. The new football manager has just been released. FM22 is on the shelves. We've been playing the beta version for the last couple of weeks but it's now officially out there. So now every year I always get asked what is a good save to have in Norway? What is a good save to have in Sweden? What is a good save to have in France? Along those sort of lines anyway. So this year I'm going to do several FM related videos for the Nordic Football Podcast YouTube channel basically giving you some save ideas maybe a few other things down the line as well but certainly three or four um, YouTube videos giving you I'm basically I'm going to do like a top five interesting ones for Sweden same for Norway I'm going to take you through maybe a youth only challenge um, say how, you, how you'd go about that in these uh, in these Scandinavian nations whatever maybe a few requests as well I might be able to do some things but I'm gonna start by basically this is a video about bringing glory back to Gothenburg it's I think it's a great place to manage in FM it's a really great city there's some really interesting teams there this initially was actually going to be part of this sort of five or six interesting save ideas for Sweden, but I just totally overran with the recording. So it's going to have to be a video on its own, on its own now, on its own right. Um, but uh, basically, just some ideas for you guys um, for the Swedish leagues here in Gothenburg to set the ball rolling as such. The first save suggestion or idea isn't actually one club it's a combination of six different clubs and they're all in the city of Gothenburg or how the Swedish pronounce it Göteborg. Now Gothenburg is the second biggest city in Sweden that's where it's located it's about a million people uh, in its population if you include the whole sort of metropolitan area. Now the six clubs three of them all play at the same um, venue here Gamla Ulevi that's where EFK Göteborg Gais and Orgrite, that's where they reside. If you go north of the city, that's where Biko Hecken reside. And two smaller clubs, which I'm going to include in this, um, reside in the south part of the Gothenburg area. That is Utsikens Biko. And there's also a club called uh, Vastra Frolunda. And they both play at the same stadium here called Rudalen. So six clubs are all in the Gothenburg area. So I've switched to Wikipedia to show you a history of the Swedish champions down the years. Uh, Malmo have the most with 21. EFK Göteborg with 18. And Norrköping uh, currently third place with 13. And we've got a couple of Stockholm teams. Aiko and New York Garten there with 12. Or Greta with 12. Now the city of Gothenburg is a rich footballing uh, tradition um, down the years if we look here by titles won by city 35 times the title has been won by teams from Gothenburg 25 uh, from Stockholm and 21 from Malmo there um, in fact that could actually technically rise even more because there was a period here between 1925 and 1929 it doesn't actually show you here but the the title wasn't officially um, awarded to champion of Sweden it was basically unofficial but Geis won it twice um, during that period and Orgrita won it twice during that period as well so technically you could say that Gothenburg has actually had uh, 39 titles either way it's a hell of a lot so the most incredible thing is only once this century as a team from Gothenburg actually won the Asfenskan crown though and that was in 2007 and that was uh, EF Core Jotteborg. Nothing else. Most of Orgrit's wins were a century ago. Geist last one in 1954. And then there's this team here called Jotteborg EF. They don't even exist anymore. It's quite staggering that a city of this stature has only had one Alsvenskan crown in, in the last, um, well, once in the last uh, 20 odd years. And that's not good enough. Whatever club you take on here in Gothenburg, you've got to bring the Alsvenskan title back. And bring it back quickly. I'm going to start with the biggest club, and that is EFK Jotebore. Now, 18 league titles, like I said before, this lot have a hell of a history. 
um, in terms of competitions won. They even have a couple of Europa League successes. UEFA, UEFA Cup back then, 1982, that was under Sven Joran Eriksson, and 1987 as well. Uh, several Swedish Cup successes, the most recent being in the year 2020, that was behind closed doors. It was a weird final against Malmö. Um, and I say, loads of Ask Venskan titles, but just that one this century in 2007, they dominated the 90s and the 80s, didn't they? But they, you know, they've fallen on, on more difficult times. Um, if we have to look at the actual recent history of league positions, it's been poor in the last sort of four or five years. Uh, you know, even someone like Hecken from uh, across uh, north of the city have been finishing higher than them in some instances. So, you know, let's just see what the objectives are if you went to uh, EF Core. Uh, they want you to finish in the top four this season and they reach the semi-final of the Swedish Cup. Finances, a two million bank balance. Uh, and in terms of uh, transfer, just 62,000, that's all. Sorry, no, 250,000 uh, in the transfer uh, kitty and 2K in the wage budget. I think it's a little bit, it might be asking, it might be quite harsh actually top four the first season here at uh, EF Core. Let's just see where they actually are uh, in the um, season preview of the Asvenskan. Seventh. Now remember, bear in, bear, there's, a, there's another save idea coming up soon and the board are nowhere near as harsh as EF Core. Um, 33 to one shot. I mean, you're going to have some reasonable players to work with for sure. Marcus Berg. Uh, getting on a bit now, 34 year old striker would probably be a key man. Uh, August Erling Mark as well, centre back or midfielder. Uh, in terms of potential, Oscar Williamson, he's probably the one you're going to look out for, this 17 year old uh, striker. Dubbed the new, um, well, the Swedish Holland by, by some. I don't think maybe he's that, at that sort of level, but he is highly regarded nevertheless. You've got some good facilities here at uh, EF Core, you've got good academy coaching, average youth recruitment, good training, sorry, great training and good youth. And of course you play at Gamla Ulave, which has an 18,400 capacity. So yeah, big club test. Um, you could probably win the title and maybe have a decent European run within uh, quite a few seasons at EF Core if you fancy that sort of a challenge. The next team we're gonna talk about are also in the Alsvensk and that is Beek or Hecken. They're in the north part of the city. They don't play at Gamla Ulave, they play at the Bravida Arena here, uh, built in 2015. They have a, they've kind of rose to prominence quite quickly in the last sort of couple of decades. If we look at their recent uh, history, they've, they've been sort of always in the, the top half of the, the Alsvensk and since sort of 2009, but they've never won it before. Um, they've won two Swedish Cups though. Um, as recently as 2016 and 19, but they've never won the Alsvenskan. The closest they've come was 2012 when they were runners up. So, Hecken. Um, interesting stuff in terms of um, the finances. They actually got 3.4 million in the banks, more than the F Core. Um, in terms of the scouting budget, they've got 400,000 to spend and not much in the wage budget. What do the board want from you? I'm guessing the board actually will want. Um, a decent finish at least. They only want top half. You see, EF Core, the board wants top four. Here at Beko Hecken, they only want top half. They want you to reach the semi final of the Swedish Cup. They also got a few other things here sign players under the age of 23, play entertaining football, develop players using the club's youth system. Um, and they want you challenging for the Asvenskan title by the end of 2024. Now, one of the interesting things about this, they, they do have, they have better youth facilities and recruitment than, than EF Court. This is probably the best in the whole of Gothenburg, actually. They've got great training, they've got great youth facilities, good academy coaching, good youth recruitment. So, you know, you've, you're gonna get some decent lads come through your academy here. Uh, to start with, your best player on the book is Alexander Yeremiev. He did play in Bundesliga 2, I think, in Germany. A striker um, who's sort of in his prime years. He should go well for you. He's the, the best in terms of ability, along with uh, Godswill, Ekpolo, Eric Freiberg, and Unatovia. So you've got three of your four best players are sort of in defensive areas. Potential, who's the best potential? Patrick Volomark. 
Uh, Volomark is, is the guy with the best potential, 19 year old. He, you, get, you get a tune out of him this season, to be honest with you. He's a very good player. And Ali Youssef, uh, Tunisian, 20 years old. So, um, yeah, if you want to take over a club that's never won the league, uh, but she's probably knocking on the door in the next two or three years, um, then Beek or Hecken, they, they'll be a good save, uh, good save for you. Whilst we're here in the middle of this video, a bit of a self promo to the Nordic Football Podcast. This is a regular, often weekly podcast hosted by myself and Jonathan for Dugba. We often have some special guests on as well. Um, if you're interested in Scandinavian football, especially Norway and Sweden, this is the place for you because we have some great content. We're on all platforms uh, here on Apple Podcasts. We are on Spotify. We are on ACAS. And of course, we're here on the Nordic Football Podcast YouTube channel. Every single episode is automatically uploaded to YouTube. It's probably these days one of the easier places to access it. So if you're not already, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon as well so you're going to get notified about any new video releases from the channel. Click on that bottom right hand side, the little button, if you're not already subscribed. But uh, yeah, if you're interested in Nordic uh, Football Podcast Matters, this is the place for you. We're going to the Super Etten now and we're going with Orgreet. Now, Jonathan Fadugba, my co-host on the Nordic Football Podcast, he did a save with this club in FM 2017. He actually posted uh, a selection of videos on his uh, Just Football YouTube channel, um, highlighting the progress uh, about a year or so ago now. He called it Ois in Source, which is a great name. So, can you uh, replicate Jonathan's success uh, with that save? He got them up to the Alsvenskan. But uh, he was only with them for a few seasons, I think, so he wasn't able to achieve huge things. But Orgreet, they're a club with a great history. Um, they've won several league titles uh, in the past. Officially, according to F FM, 14 times. According to Wiki, it's 12. It's to do with 1925 to 1930. Apparently, the Swedish cap champion didn't count, according to Wiki. I don't know the ins and outs of that. What I do know is they won a lot of bloody titles back in the day most of them a century ago they did win one in 1985 though that's the most recent Swedish Cup win in 2000 and a runner-up in 1998 uh, they're not really at the level they want to be um, you know they've had they, they were down the third tier at the about a decade ago and yeah that's nowhere near where Orgreet should be traditionally an Alsvenskan club let's just see what the board want from them then they're in the super in the second tier of Swedish football they want a top half finish this season um, by the end of season three, they want promotion to Ars Svenskan, so quite ambitious there. They also want you to sign players from the lower levels of the domestic game and play entertaining football. Quite how feasible this is, I'm not sure. Your best player looks to be someone called Anel Rashkai, uh, Kosovan. I probably didn't pronounce that right, but he looks like a really versatile midfielder, attacker, winger, um, who you know hopefully you can get a tune out of him if you choose to take uh, or Greta on. They want top half. Let's see how feasible that is with the season preview. A 13 to 1 shot. That doesn't seem too bad, actually. That should be manageable in your first season. Financially, they've got half a million in the bank. What about transfers? Let's see if they've got uh, much there. Not much, only 20k. So you're going to be scraping around. There's not much in terms of the wage budget either. But can you bring this giant of a club back to its former glory uh, here uh, with Orgreet? Uh, I, I feel like this is a really interesting save. They've got they've got okay facilities they've got average training average adequate youth adequate academy coaching adequate rec recruitment have they got any affiliations uh, they've got an affiliation with Elfsborg and a club from Zambia maybe that might help you with some youth recruitment I don't know but I mean they're in a big area big populated area I feel it will greet uh, a really interesting save uh, for you potentially to take on we're staying in the Super Etten and we're with Geis now they also play uh, Gamla Ulavi, just like Orgreet do, and just like EF Core Jotterbog do. Fierce rivals with both of them. I, I feel like this is a club that doesn't get enough love, you know. Um, there was a, a few reactions on Twitter recently. In real life, they're struggling to keep their place in the Super Etten, and uh, some of the reactions that we, we got on Twitter, it seems like they've almost become irrelevant. But this is a side that's actually won plenty of our Svenskan titles. Officially, According to FM6, according to Wiki, it's four. It's because of this period between 1925 to 1930, like I said before, with all Greta, it's a bit of a grey area. But they have won titles. All right, the most recent one is 1954. Um, one Swedish Cup to their name in 1942 and one runners-up. This is a club that 
I mean, if you look at this graph, it's pretty steady. There were, I mean, this didn't look good to hear, sort of at the turn of the century, did it? But then there were Al Svenskan for several years, then a relegation to Super Retin, and since then it's been a very straight line, hasn't it? Sort of mid table of the Super Retin most seasons, uh, somewhere between 7th and sort of 10th or 12th one year um, for Geis. Let's just see what the board want from you this year. They want top half finish. And just like Orgrita, they actually won promotion to the Alsvenskan by the end of 2023. They're ambitious, you know. Orgrita and Geist, they don't want to be languishing in the Super Retin. They want to be in the Alsvenskan. I can't blame them, really. Um, I think this is probably a harder save than Orgrit first season, to be honest. They're 25-1. to 1. So, yeah, this is tougher. And financially, they've only got 167000 in the in the bank. Projection, not good. Um, I think financially there's some issues here at uh, Ogre to actually I mean they've got a small bank loan so I think it's going to be a bit more of a challenge for you I doubt there's that much in the transfer kitty either nothing at all in the transfer uh, budget and zero and nothing in the wage budget either bloody hell yeah first season here is not going to be easy um, let's just see what sort of facilities you've got you've got average training adequate youth Average academy coaching and only fairly basic youth recruitment. So EF Core, Hecken, or Greet, all ahead of you in terms of the youth recruitment in the area. You need to get that improved. I think this is the toughest save of the two in the Super N. Um, if you want a more of a challenge compared to or Greet, I would say Geis are the one probably to take on. But a uh, very interesting save nevertheless. Before I move to the next team, I just want to give a shout out to the skin that I'm using for these videos. And it's called the... Uh, 2022 Flux Skin Dark Beta 2 version, and you can download this from. Well, I've got it from Sort It Out SI, um, but you can get it from probably FM Base and a few others as well. Um, like I said, this guy's been making skins for about 10 years now. Um, he constantly updates them, so this will be. You can download this one now. I'm showing by probably weeks time. There's maybe at least one other version while he gets it right. Typical things of the skin. I mean, here's some uh, images. Probably the big thing with this skin is the player profile. Um, the attributes are put in a different way to what a lot of normal skins are, so it can take a bit of getting used to on the eye. But if you like that sort of thing, then that's great. Um, I mean, one of the things I really love about this skin is how the actual uh, teams uh, and nations are put across, for example, here. I love how they do that with the stadium, the uh, actual town or city and for that you actually need and uh, faces of the players as well for that you actually need some of the face packs and background uh, packs that you can also download from like S uh, sort of SI and FM base things like that I'll put some in the in the video description links down below uh, if you want to do that sort of thing but yeah shout out to the flux skin um, I think it's a really good skin to use for these videos because a nice little visual representation um, when I'm doing sort of uh, save idea videos like this one. So moving on to a bit of a smaller club here, Utsikens B Core. Um, they are in Division One Sudra, which is the third tier. There's two divisions in the third tier of Sweden: Division One Sudra and the Division One North as well. They're in the south division of that. Season preview: their favourites win the league, actually, which is great. Obviously, let's see what the board expectations are in a minute. They play at a ground called Rudderlands uh, IP, 5,000 capacity, uh, you, you also, the other team that plays here, there's quite a few teams that play here actually, but Vostra Frolander, the team we're going to talk about next also here. The history for uh, Utsikens, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm not impressed that they've not put any rivals here. I think this is a bug or a glitch or just sheer sloppiness. They would surely be rivals with some of the teams in Gothenburg, so I think that's wrong. I don't like that. I must say, um, that, that's not right for me. Their history, they're generally, I mean, actually, they're a Super Retin in 2015 for one season. That's not a bad level, actually, for Utsikens. Looks like they're constantly knocking on the door of the Super Retin soon. So, uh, what do the board want? I imagine the board want promotion. Um, and they do. They want you to win the league. Wow. So, uh, first season, you've got to get the business done. Otherwise, you might be in trouble. Um, and, uh, and and take it from there, really, for Utsikens. Let's see what your um, finances are like. You've got 90k in the balance. Projection's not great. Is there any debt? No. There's no debt at least. Yeah, let's have a look at the squad. Who's your best player to work with here at Utsikens? Looks like there's a collection of decent ones, but Carl Bohm 
seems the strongest lad. Uh, looks like he can play midfielder, attacker, wingers. Um, he looks like the one to watch out for there. Say smaller club, they've never won the Alsvenskan before. I don't think they've ever been, they've ever even been up at uh, Alsvenskan level. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, they're definitely a smaller sort of club. What sort of facilities have you got here? You've got uh, below average training, below average youth. Good academy coaching though, which is impressive. Fairly basic youth recruitment. I wonder if you've got an affiliate here with some of the... Yeah, you've got an affiliation with EF Core Jotterborg, so they can send players on loan. That's not too bad either. But Sikens B Core. Let's have a look. They're an interesting one to maybe get your teeth in, into as a smaller club from Gothenburg. And the last team from Gothenburg... Uh, Vastra Frolunda. Uh, they also play at Rudelands uh, IP, just like Utsikens. They are in the fourth tier of the Swedish pyramid. They're in Division 2 uh, Vastra Gotland. So they're quite well down the pyramid. Um, this is the lowest uh, level you can manage at in the main database in uh, for Sweden in FM. Season preview, the mid-table there. They've just got promoted, actually. So they're 25 to one shot mid table. Let's see what the club, uh, the board want from me. They want a top half finish as well. And nothing too much more after that. Their finances, they've got 8,000 in the bank balance. Their projection is not particularly great. They've no debt though. Let's have a look at the club info and facilities. Here at Vastra, Frolunda, poor training, poor youth, average academy coaching, fairly basic youth recruitment. Do they have any affiliations with clubs in the, in the in Gothenburg? No, they don't. But they do have a rival. The rivals are listed here, not as fierce rivals, but as rivals: Beko Hek and Eftkort, Ugrita and Geis. So at least they've got that bit right about them. Uh, in terms of the squad, I mean, this is Division Four level of Sweden. There is a lad here, though. Look at this: four and a half star ability, five star potential. Mans Olstrom. So this guy here, 24 year old. The clear standout player is uh, he's probably one of the best in the whole league, I'm guessing. Um, so <laughs> he's going to be a big part of uh, your club here if you come to Vastra Frolunda, um, that's for sure. So, uh, yeah, he, he's clear standout. There's a couple of other lads, I think, with reasonable potential as well. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Six different clubs from Gothenburg. You can give a try. Get that Alsvenskan title back to this city. Whoever you choose, loads of different types of saves. It's big clubs, it's small clubs, the lot. Great region for football. I think you'll have a lot of fun with a, a, a save from Gothenburg. Thanks very much for watching the video. Just a reminder, you can follow me on Twitter at Meatman Soccer. Also, follow at Nordic Footpod and at JF Football. You can follow me on my Twitch channel, Meatman Soccer, where I've got an FM save coming up, Youth Only Challenge in Italy. Please subscribe to the channel. Please leave any comments. If you want to see some more FM videos, do let me know. Until then, Stay safe, take care, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.